AAUW is me. I wanted to meet some new people and do some different things. And I also wanted to be part of an organization that had a social commitment to young women and in the community at large. I want to be a contributing member of an organization where women help women in promoting education, in making friends, in entertaining one another, and in sharing ideas about this world. Women would want to join the AAUW because we have a very fierce commitment to equality and equity for women and girls. And if that's something that you're interested in, this is one of the best venues to help channel that energy. Hello, and welcome to AAUW Connections. Uh, tonight we have, we're going to be talking about a really compelling subject, namely child AIDS in Africa. Um, and more specifically, the Rotary Child AIDS Prevention Project. Uh, and we have a couple of experts on the subject to talk to, who will tell us about it tonight. And we have Rich Casey, who is the president of the Los Altos Rot Rotary AIDS Project. And we have Alan Varney, who is the co-chair of Rotary's World Community Service uh, mm -hmm. Committee. So uh, before we get down to the specifics of the project, let's talk a little about the Rotary AIDS Project itself, uh, Rich. Yeah, well the Rotary AIDS Project started about 20 years ago, actually over 20 years ago, um, when a, the, the then president of the Rotary Club of Los Altos uh, got up in his first meeting and said, my son has AIDS. And of course, the, the Rotary Club was stunned. I mean, I, remember, I was there. Oh, were you there? Yeah. Okay. Well, you remember, '89 was not a time when mm -hmm. people liked to talk about AIDS. That's right. Because mm -hmm. it was that gay thing, you know. Um, but you know, the the club rallied around him and uh, said, "Yeah, we want to help get the word out about AIDS, how you get AIDS, try to reduce the stigma." And then a, a few months later, apparently, I wasn't there, but you may have been, when another member of the club got mm -hmm. up and said, "I have AIDS," and he was 65 year old heterosexual. Mm -hmm. and people said, well, "That's not possible." But Walter Singer. But indeed he did through a transfusion during surgery. And so that led to the formation of the Los Altos Rotary AIDS Project, which for 20 years made major contributions in educating America about AIDS and trying to reduce the stigma associated with the disease. And how then, what led you then to become interested in Africa? Alan, were, were you part of that? Or? Well, uh, as part of the World Community Services Committee, um, we look at uh, a number of countries where there's need. And, and as we were um, looking at various projects, uh, Rich's project came up as one that was something that we could get interested in in terms of a committee and support financially as well as um, helping with, with, uh, with people. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I took a look at the project, and Rich had mentioned that the, he was putting together a grant. And the uh, project was involved child, child AIDS, AIDS prevention, yeah. Okay. Child yeah. AIDS, correct. Mm -hmm. And that was something that our committee was interested in. Ah. Mm -hmm. So um, I took an interest in it and became involved that way. And then, how then did you settle on Liberia specifically? Well, Liberia specifically was because we, well, first of all, we had a relationship with um, a, a doctor named Dr. Arthur Amon a retired professor of uh, pediatric immunology at UC San Francisco. Uh -huh. And he had his own NGO called Global Strategies for HIV Prevention. And they're probably the leading NGO in knowing how to deal with pediatric AIDS. And so we hooked up with him, and he had already been to Liberia for like five years. And he said the reason we're doing Liberia first is they have, they've just come out of 13 years of civil war, mm. and they had no access to American funds. USAID wouldn't give them money. The President's Emergency Fund for AIDS Relief wouldn't give them money. Nobody would give them money. So Art decided to focus on Liberia for that reason. And, and also, they speak English. Yeah, that's yeah. A, mm -hmm. so then the, at that point, or at some point after that, the two of you decided to go to Liberia, correct? Correct. And which happened a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And Alan, I understand you were the videographer, the official <laughs> documentarian, a as you bit said. Of everything, right. And uh, and we're going to be watching that video right mm -hmm. now. So okay. let's have a look at it. Hi, I'm Rich Casey, president of the Los Altos Rotary AIDS Project, and I've just arrived in Liberia 
for a week of visiting a variety of clinics that the Los Altos Rotary is supporting with our new Child AIDS Prevention Project. And the first place we're stopping in at is St. Joseph's Hospital, uh, a major Catholic hospital in the center of Liberia, uh, this capital city of Monrovia. Yeah. And so here's a baby getting a dose of Navarapine right after being born in Liberia. Um, in Liberia. How old is this baby? So he's about a few hours old. So here we're going through uh, the area called West Point. It's one of the most densely populated areas of Liberia. Star of the Sea Health Center is a uh, government-run, government-owned public health For the three positive. Out of trying to figure out what the prevalence rate of HIV is here. appears to be about 3%. That number was positive. Right. Positive. This is a two-point. Yeah. 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 Medical director of St. Joseph's Catholic Hospital. <laughs> Baby, just one day old. And, and her name again? Nagat. Nagat. So this is a um, this is a charity orphanage and um, hospice care center. Kids have been abandoned often by mothers who have AIDS. Really well done. Well, thanks. <laughs> uh, I know this is part of a larger video as well that goes right. into it in more detail. Uh, and one of the things that I s remember from having seen the, the longer version mm -hmm. uh, was a comparison of, uh, of how many children are born in the United States each year with, with a HIV being HIV positive compared to how many in Africa. And why don't you, one of you, Talk about that. Yeah, it's, in America, it's 100 babies a year are born HIV positive out of a population of 320 million. And in Africa? Uh, unfortunately, in Africa, there are about 400,000 born each year. It, it's just mind boggling. Yeah. And uh, how do we avoid that in the United States? We avoid it simply because uh, it's required that every single woman who's pregnant, when she goes to a doctor, she's tested for her HIV status. So we know okay. immediately uh, whether she's positive or negative. Mm -hmm. And if she's positive, she's immediately put on the, the triple drug combination to suppress her HIV or, or virus level. And so when her baby is born, there's a very, very remote chance sh the baby will be infected. In, in Africa, it's not that way at all. The, the, one of the biggest challenges is finding the women and testing them. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get back to that because I think yeah. that, that obviously that leads into the rest of the story. But how many and the video itself, how many hospitals did you visit while you were there? 
Uh, well, one hospital and well, a number clinics of clinics. Yeah, uh, you know, that's a About. good question. Well, um, four or five, okay. um, and some were more remote than others. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one we went to one that was actually about a four-hour ride um, on a long uh, on a dirt road and what was um, difficult I think for our whole team was to realize that if it wasn't for the kinds of services that we're providing and some of the other NGOs there that that the, the uh, mothers and therefore the children in these remote clinics would not have the opportunity that they will have as this program begins to progress and that's what's exciting about it we can make a difference right away and, and that that was providing the energy for our team uh, and how long were you there uh, we were there for 10 days okay so you covered a lot of territory we covered a lot of territory there was very little downtime were you just observing what was being done there where you weren't involved in administering any of the uh the drug? No, we weren't. Okay. No, no right. that's strictly through the public health system okay. that the, the tests are done and the drugs are administered. Now, um, as you mentioned, all pregnant women in the United States are given a test. Uh, are all in these clinics, do they test every woman who goes in? Post they try, but, but the first thing they have to do is counsel the women about what HIV is because if a woman is tested, then she has to deal with the issue about telling her husband or her partner. Mm -hmm you've been sleeping around, or I have. And I know I have. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> then, so there's tremendous uh, you know, resistance initially to being tested, but mm -hmm. obviously we have to test everybody. Do most of them ultimately agree to being tested or The not? women do. That's mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah, the men don't. Yeah. yeah. And so how many women were treated in 2010, do you have a feeling for that, in Liberia? Uh, in 2010, I don't know, our, our, our project started just the beginning of this year, 2011. Oh, oh, oh okay, yeah. so uh, this was the, so you just now started yeah, testing we were in pregnant the, women. Well, uh, they, no, they, they, the public health system knew to test people. It's just we're providing more resources, more testing uh, resources and, and treatment resources for them. So there'll be more tests in the future. What is the cost of the test? About. The test is only two dollars per, okay. per uh, woman. And once they're tested, and and then, do you uh, do you treat all of the women as if they had tested positive, or do you wait for the test results? No, we have to. The current WHO uh, guidelines are you wait until you actually have a confirmatory test. So we give a rapid, what we call a rapid test to each woman for two dollars. But then if she tests positive, you have to make sure she is. So you, you send a sample of her blood away to a lab elsewhere and get it confirmed for sure. And then you begin treatment. How do you keep her there for that? Well, how do yeah. you get her to come back whenever? Well, that's one of the big challenges that Alan and I saw. I mean, right. that, is, mm -hmm. that is one of the key challenges. And one of the things we're gonna be supporting is home health care workers who will go to the homes of these women and make sure they come back, mm -hmm. um, particularly when they deliver and then later. And support groups. What, what uh, the video showed um, some training that was going on in one of the mm -hmm. clinics, and that was a support group for HIV positive uh, mothers. Mm -hmm. And so it was it was part of the training as well. And um, so so they get the training. Now you admin you start you administer mm -hmm. the, the drug. Yeah. Uh, how much does that cost to administer the drug? Well, it depends. If you get the woman early enough uh, before she delivers, you like to put her on three drugs, um, mm -hmm. you know, be before she delivers for about three to four months. That costs probably in the range of uh, five to ten dollars a month. Okay, and and your group, the Childhood AIDS Project or the Child AIDS Project, mm -hmm. pays for that. We'll be trying. Yeah, we'll be paying for not only that, but the drugs we give to the mother and the baby at the time of birth. Mm -hmm. So some of the mothers you are able to treat for three or four months, and others... Yeah, just show up, just and they're del delivering What do you do day. in that case? Then you just give them the one drug you show, showed in the video, and that was nevirapine, which is a remarkable drug. So if you give that to the mother and the baby at, at the time of birth, you reduce half of the infections just with that one drug for one dollar. Wow. That's remarkable. And, mm -hmm. and okay. Um, now, we, we talked about the education, uh, you know, and, the, and persuading the women to have the test and now, mm -hmm. and, and to get the results. Mm -hmm. um, is, there, is there anything you can do about the husbands or is that just a lost yeah, that, cause? That's actually a, 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 the next phase of what we'll be working on. And, and the short answer is yes. 
it will be difficult. We um, have had contact with the um, largest women's advocacy group in Monrovia, and they've agreed to work with us to help um, set up a uh, support group for women education so that the women then will feel supported in their uh, ability to go about talking with their husbands in particular mm -hmm. about um, about HIV and so that they can continue to, to work to prevent it. Um, but it's more long term and there are cultural overlays that we oh, are concerned about, but we are beginning to make inroads and that's our next so you are you can you have the sense that you are beginning to make inroads. Well, in, we're in beginning terms of the women being able to talk to their husbands. Correct, even. and we're starting mm -hmm. that process now. That's the next phase. And does uh, is is this some of your funding going to that? To it is the funding is not, I assume, strictly for the medicine. It's also to form help support the yes. help oh, support yeah. the That's advocacy correct. groups. To, oh sure, yeah. Okay. No, counseling and uh, education are a big part of what we right. provide. And um, do you follow up the babies? That's the hardest part of the whole equation mm -hmm. because in order to, to determine whether the baby got infected or not, you have to test the baby 18 months after they were mm -hmm. born. And to find them 18 months later is, is a big problem because they don't have street addresses. Yeah. You know? And so that's why the role of the, the home-based healthcare worker is so mm -hmm. important. And we'll be supporting salaries for those types of people. And oh, so them. you will have home-based. Oh, yeah, uh, right, for sure. Ah. And the support group. The support group helps that as well because mm -hmm. if you can get the women interested and involved in the support group, they're more likely to stay for that those 18 months. So that's the other piece of that. Mm -hmm. And is the support group mainly <coughs> in the cities or, or throughout the, it's through, the ones it's that through, you're working with? Right, it's, it's throughout advocate. their system. Oh, okay. That's, the, that's the, the hope, is to get them involved in each of the clinics. I noticed in the video that uh, when they were seeing all the children, that many of them, the comment was made that many of them are abandoned by yep. their mothers, mm -hmm. which in sort of a perverse sense, uh, the, the silver lining, mm -hmm. if there was to that situation, that at least then presumably someone is watching them yeah. and, and following right. up because they're there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not a happy situation, obviously. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, so the, those wonderful women from the Sisters of Charity, that's Mother Teresa's group of nuns. Oh, mm -hmm. it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. We were just so impressed with them. I mean, you know, and it, this is a very desperate situation. These little babies have been left on their doorstep. Mm -hmm. Yet, when you walk in, you feel happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have this wonderful way of, of creating an environment of happiness and support among these little kids who are desperately ill and abandoned. Mm -hmm. you know? Do they have, are there many little babies that are, are abandoned in that way? Well, we saw a lot. Uh, I don't yeah, know. there must there fifteen or oh, so yeah, in that yeah. one room, and then at varying mm -hmm. various ages as well. And, and they also take care of adults in that same facility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, who are HIV positive? Correct. Yeah, have AIDS. Wow. Correct. Um, and I, 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 somewhere I've heard or read that the cost of taking care of one woman, an ongoing way, is about one hundred fifty dollars a year. Is that correct? Yeah, more like a hundred, actually. Okay. Nowadays, the and drugs have become very inexpensive. And so that's also part of your project. Well, that's what we would like. Ultimately, that's our ultimate mm -hmm. goal: is not only to prevent the babies from getting AIDS, mm -hmm. which is our primary goal, but also take care of the mother so she's around to take care of the baby for mm -hmm. the rest of her life. Okay. Speaking, I'm sort of hopping around here. I'm sorry for this flow of consciousness, <laughs> but. Uh, taking care of the baby in the clinics, and I remember seeing Dr. Sanvi. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a story. Uh, I mean, she's quite a woman, isn't she? Oh, yeah, she mm -hmm. is. Alan? <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting story, because during the war, um, the rebels, for the most part, devastated the city of Monrovia and uh, burned buildings and took furniture and equipment, and they, uh, there was one hospital left standing and it was St. Joseph's Hospital. Which is where Dr. Sanvi Which is where Dr. Mm -hmm. Sanvi is. And they literally came to the front gate and threatened to um, also uh, devastate her hospital. And she went out and confronted the, mm. the uh, soldiers and basically told them, uh, if you have to do it, go ahead. But if you do, number one, you have to come through me. And number two, if you take this hospital and destroy it, who's going to take care of your soldiers? Mm -hmm. And so they had a moment of clarity and realized <laughs> that it's probably not the best <laughs> thing to do. Better rethink this situation. But it, 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 was, it took some courage for her. Oh, and, yes. and she is that kind of person. She is an amazing personality and, and makes that hospital what it is today. Mm. Um, 
So you you do plan, you have some plans for expanding the program oh, as, yeah, as yeah. into many. Um, and, and where will the funds come from? Where do your funds come well, from? Well, our, our funds initially have come from Rotary uh, people. We're part of the Los Altos Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. And um, so we raised funds from our club and clubs in the San Francisco Bay Area, which were matched by funds from Rotary International in Chicago, the main office. But going forward, we're also looking for funds from major corporations and foundations um, beyond Rotary, uh, but also all with active participation from Rotary through their matching funds. Um, but we're, we're, we're ramping up. We, we raised about seventy-five to $100,000 last year. We're looking to raise a quarter of a million dollars this coming year, mm -hmm. and then on up from there. Are you, well, of course, we're not quite halfway through the year, but are yeah. you, uh, do you feel like you're on a good track to, to get there? I think we are. We've got our major asks out, and now we'll see mm -hmm. you know, whether the economy has affected our yeah. ability uh, to yes, collect the cash. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, in one of our conversations, I guess we talked about the difficulty of just distributing, getting the drugs mm -hmm. to the clinics and all. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about that and how mm -hmm. you might improve that if you could. Well, we, we visit this one clinic called the Sastown Clinic, which is about only about an hour, hour and a half north of Monrovia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they have two, one, they have a midwife and a nurse who are wonderful people and know how to, you know, deal with these pregnancies and test the women and counsel them. Um, but they have to order their drugs through the central warehouse in Monrovia. And they ordered the drugs, but it took three months oh to get a supply. So imagine if you found a, a pregnant woman who's HIV positive mm -hmm. and you want to give her the drugs and immediately. she's not coming in till the, the end of her yeah, pregnancy I mean, problem. So, right. Yeah, so logistics are always a big problem throughout Africa, no matter where you go. And yeah. do the drugs have to be refrigerated or anything like that? Or Some do. Some do. And, and the, the, partner that, that we, the partnership that we established with the Syncor Rotary. Um, that's a Rotary Club That's in a Rotary Liberia. Club in Liberia, <clears throat> in Monrovia. Part of what they've agreed to do is uh, help to support the um, distribution of uh, either drugs. That they're going to help Dr. Sanvi with transportation uh, out to some of the clinics, depending on what it is that's needed. One of the clinics we visited, they run out of fuel for their generator that keeps the refrigerators running oh. to keep the medicine <laughs> cool. They run out of it the third week of every month because they don't have the funds or the ability to store the fuel. Mm -hmm. So we're, um, in, we've encouraged them the, the uh, Rotary to help participate in that cycle so that they will then bring fuel out every oh. third week along with drugs or whatever else mm -hmm. is needed. <coughs> so, so that relationship is important in terms of keeping the flow of drugs and fuel and whatever is needed out to the clinics. Well, if it, drugs take three months to, to reach mm -hmm. a clinic, and which hopefully now, as you say, will mm -hmm. be improved, mm -hmm. if it takes three months, do you, at some point, can you have a pipeline established? So even though the input is right. out here, there's always something coming out at the other end because you've had it running long enough. Is that? That's part of what we're hoping to work with the hospital for, is to have um, uh, enough drugs purchased to um, have a, if, you know, a steady supply mm -hmm. um, in order to make up for those times where they can't get them through their normal sources. Okay. But we're going to be tested, Marge, because um, we, we also met with Save the Children, you know, one of the largest yes, NGOs yes, for women and children mm -hmm. in the world. And uh, they are running 22-some clinics, clinics going out Far, much farther into the countryside also than we ever did. Also uh, for HIV positive. Well, they, run, they run the entire public health clinic, ah. so all, all diseases. And, but they, they have been challenged to, to work with women who are HIV positive, mm -hmm. and so we're going to support their efforts. But this will challenge our logistics because mm -hmm. we're going much farther out into mm -hmm. the countryside. Yeah. So we'll right. see. Probably you know. challenge your fundraising abilities, oh, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, of course, th as you say, they have their own whole infrastructure. I mean, and people recognize Save the Children, so yeah. that... That's right. should help as well. Now, what about the situation with doctors in Liberia? Are there ample doctors? No. No. We, we were over there. We went with this mission from uh, organized by Global Strategies for mm -hmm. HIV Dr. Prevention, Dr. Aman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he brought along, uh, as a, a parallel effort, a urologist and a, a dermatologist. Why a urologist? Uh, well, because for other, re you know, not oh. HIV related, oh, oh, okay. but f to treat other patients mm -hmm. in the hospital. Well, they were the only, if I recall, Alan the only two in the entire country at that the time. The only two, the only right. urologist, only urologist and, and the only in Liberia, a country of three and a half million people. Yeah. Uh, 
Is, there, is it that the education system is not producing doctors? Why are there so few doctors? Well, it's partly area? that, Marge, that, right. uh, I mean, 13 years of civil war mm -hmm. destroys the country. I mean, it destroyed 80% right. of their gross domestic product, which is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And so education just disappeared. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the people, the, the great young students who, who were educated left. And, and one of the major objectives of the current president, uh, the only female president of an African nation, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, <laughs> is to get her people to come back. Ah, uh, is and she having any success with that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, but she's out, I, I heard her at Berkeley speak uh, about a year and a half ago, and that was her major message, is if you're a Liberian, please come home and help mm -hmm. us rebuild this country. Because if the whole, if after 13 years of war, mm -hmm. the whole, the educational system was mm -hmm. destroyed yeah. or non-functioning right. anyway, even if you put it back, if you start building it up again, how long is it before you get enough children, enough young yeah. people through the pipeline yeah. to become doctors? I to think get to this medical is the school. first year they're going to graduate a few doctors, yeah. and I forget oh, the will. number, yeah. but I want to say 20. Yeah. It may be, I, I don't know that exact number, but it's a, it's a few that they've begun, s since the, hosp the major hospital has been rebuilt. Ha that, has that has happened. That has happened. Kennedy, JFK Hen Kennedy Hospital in Monrovia is the teaching hospital. And I think this is the first year they'll graduate doctors. So those doctors will have a hospital in which to intern and mm -hmm. to correct do their mm -hmm. residency, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. And they're also working with St. Joseph and Dr. Sanvi's hospital mm -hmm. as well. So they've partnered. Have mm -hmm. any doctors come in from other parts of Africa or the world to practice there? Yeah, the doctor you saw at the clinic, uh, yeah. and I forget, mm -hmm. was it the Saskatoon Town uh, Clinic? I forget which one on the video. Yeah. He was, is from Ghana, I believe? Ghana, yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so they are. So they are coming in. Right. And then the Sisters of Charity, I assume, are performing many of the nursing yeah. Correct. functions. Correct. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you've got your work cut out for you, but on the other, I mean, but on the other hand, uh, there should be, uh, you Providing you can get the funds, right. uh, yeah. ample funds, I, yeah. Yeah, that that, and uh, we can make a difference. You saw that young oh, baby yeah. that was born. That baby now has a, a better chance of living than he could ever have imagined before. And it, he was born right when we were there, and he got the medication. So it was quite so, uplifting. Very, oh, the very yeah. first day that we were uh, there. Well, and uh, and then to see so many uh, the other. I, I was thinking while we were watching the video. My goodness, mm -hmm. a lot of these children. Well, they weren't the beneficiaries. But yeah. somehow those sisters, the nuns, are keeping them mm -hmm. alive as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Now, suppose yeah. someone watching wants to volunteer or contribute. What would they do? How would uh, you just go to uh, our Rotary website? That's called www.rotaryaidsproject.org, which is presumably up on the stage. Yes, uh, yeah. I mean, up uh, on the uh, screen, on the, screen, on the yes. stage. <laughs> and uh, from there, you can find the child AIDS prevention site within that that website. Good. And are there volunteer opportunities? You could do either. Yes. Are there volunteer yeah. opportunities? Uh, absolutely. Actually, mm -hmm. we're, we're, for people who are trained in pediatrics, HIV, and so forth, we're taking a team to back to Liberia in, in November. Okay. Well, so if anybody is, uh, wants to train. A wonderful Liberian, opportunity yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was really interesting. I wish we had more time. Thank you mm -hmm. both so much thank you. for coming thank and you, telling us about this project. And thank you for watching AAUW Connections. <laughs>